Hey, welcome everyone to the latest episode of Wizards on the Couch. Uh, thanks for being here on Monday night. Uh, joining me, Danny Grimes, and uh, three other veteran GMs, uh, Matt, Casey Rift, uh, uh, Brian Berg, and Jimmy Duffy. Uh, I guess just at the very outset, I should remind everyone who hasn't seen it before, it's an adult show. Uh, we enjoy an adult beverage as we are uh, having our discussions tonight. Uh, there's a little profanity. We try not to let it get out of hand. So pour yourself a beverage, sit back, and enjoy this evening's episode of Wizards of the Couch. Uh, so uh, just quick introductions around the horn. Uh, I'll do these real quick, and then we'll move on to our guest this evening. Uh, I am Danny Grimes. I'm a professional GM. I'm a graphic designer, a terrain maker, and a cartographer. Uh, I'm one of the four wizards here. Uh, Matt uh, owns and runs Cobalt Con and the Blackwood Society and a Kickstarter as of today and a game company. Um, so he's got his hands full. We're going to talk about the Kickstarter later, Matt. Uh, Brian, I see that guy at every convention, Berg. <laughs> uh, he is uh, a, a, a well-known, uh, well-known uh, on the convention uh, circuit, uh, author, game designer uh, in the independent games area, and uh, he's the owner and operator of Total Party Kill Games. Um, and then there's Jimmy Duffy, the chief reject over at Praetor's <laughs> Reject. Yeah, his Twitch channel runs games uh, all week long. Some of them here, some over there, I think. Uh, and he's running stuff several times a week. He's running Lost Minds of Fandelver. Is that right, Jimmy? That's correct. Friday nights. Friday nights, Lost Minds of Fandelver. He's got a great group, including a couple of other game designers. So it's kind of cool to watch them all play this game together. And uh, when he is not doing that, he keeps this stream up and running and manages all the tech for us and just generally keeps things going. He also loves Fantasy Grounds. He, you won't know it by the end of the show. He probably will only mention it like eight or nine Drink times. The so, so uh, that's all of us. I encourage everybody to get yourself a beverage and sit back and enjoy tonight. Well, don't, yes. don't mind if I do. Yeah. Does anybody else have anything before we start? I say, what are we drinking tonight? I brought yeah. uh, Fre Freya's Pale from Exertion. Ooh. Freya Pale from Exertion. Another Mad Swede uh, brew mm -hmm. locally here from Boise. Pale ale, a little bit of a Nordic theme there, maybe to uh, to tie into Midgard. Yeah, it might oh. might be uh, apropos. Oh. Midgard, no, <laughs> might might have gone into my selection process. I'm drinking water. I'm still on whole thirty. No booze for Danny Boy. Proud of you, man. It's amazing. Thanks. What are you drinking, Brian? It's terrible. I am going through sugar withdrawal. <laughs> um. Tonight I am I am finishing my uh, Millstream Schildbrow Amber, which is a delightful um, Iowa-based beer. And then I will quickly transition to my uh, Rogue Dead Guy Ale. That's cool. It was 110 mm -hmm. degrees here, so I'm drinking iced tea, folks. I'm hotter than hell, so right. just deal with right it. Right on, right on. So there's everybody's drink menu. It's a flight of drinks for the Wizards, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna roll right into tonight's interview. Uh, I am uh, really thrilled to be welcoming uh, our esteemed guest tonight, Wolfgang Bauer. He is the publisher at Cobalt Press. And those of you in the 5E world uh, are going to know many things, I'm sure. I'm not as voluminously knowledgeable about everything as all the folks out there are. But you're going to know him from Home of Beasts, The Hero's Handbook. Um, there's uh, just books of layers and and just some of the most innovative stuff that's out there uh for for fifth edition and uh you know he's he's been a game designer for a long time his history goes all the way back to tsr all through wizards and then finally to to cobalt press which he kind of owns and operates and uh in, on top of all that he's won a ton of awards for a lot of stuff as well so uh He's famous. Both gave me the first one to say, though, that, you know, he doesn't have a big head about it, but, I mean, he does write a lot of stuff, and I'm just absolutely thrilled that we have him here tonight to talk about world building. Um, so let's bring uh, let's bring Wolfgang on. He's on. Oh, Ooh. he's on. His okay. I snuck there. in. Okay. When nobody was looking. I snuck in. All right. Well, great. So, Cobalt's are crafty. everybody, welcome Wolfgang. 
Hey, thank you. So, and welcome to the show. The way Whoa, we usually what? get this, the way we usually get this rolling is we just ask some really general questions, and we all just kind of riff in on these uh, for a few minutes. So I guess we're all, you know, nerds have a passion for origin stories. So where did where did that when did that moment happen for you when you either realized what these games were or how why they're important to you? Oh, that one's easy. <laughs> um, I was a junior high school kid, and there was this thing called the dungeon board game, which was about mm -hmm. killing monsters and taking their treasure. Oh, and yeah. that was the first like vaguely RPG-ish thing I played, and I glommed onto the core dynamic immediately. Kill stuff, <laughs> take stuff, <laughs> triumph in murder hobo land, right? That was it. Um, but the second moment of, of the light going on was when somebody said, you know, you could make your own world with this box called D&D. And you don't have to play in the dungeon board game all the time. And that was exactly it. Oh, my God, I can make my own dungeons. Um, and I, I've never recovered. Yeah. <laughs> and I love those passages in those early books by Gygax and Arneson where they're like, just at the end of a sentence where they describe everything they've just done, they say, or you as the GM should feel free to create worlds of your own. <laughs> and, and, I was, and I always love those sentences. I was just like, wow, this guy's just totally giving me permission to ignore everything uh, he said and do what I want. <laughs> I totally took that permission and ran with it. I think, I think that's yeah. still sort of an early level up for us, right? Like new, maybe we've been around a long time and kind of vaguely remember it, but every new player um, at my table is like, can I do this? Can I do that? Do I have permission? Yeah. And, and just saying, yes, you can see the lights go on, right? Like I can do that. Well, yeah, it happens powerful. every day. I mean, you just peruse around the internets for a little bit and watch people ask questions, just like you said. And I mean, every day you see those light bulbs pop on, like, oh, I have creative license to do what I want in my game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Yeah, it's you know what I'm interesting too. You were saying is that in, sorry, in, in real life, how many times a day do you get told no? Isn't it great to have a game where you're being told yes and that you can do all the cool, amazing things that you want? Yes. Oh, yeah. And, and with board games, too, often when you're arguing about whether a rule should work a certain way, you're arguing against a rule. Whereas when you're playing and you say, well, can I try this? It's a discussion between you and the GM and the, maybe even the other players who are all nodding. Or they're like, no way. Man. No, it's a horrible <laughs> idea. Please, you're going to get us all killed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So so I think I know the answer to this that would be obvious, uh, but I'll ask it anyway. The favorite kind of like component of gaming for you, if you had to, if you looked around all the things you do, all the things you have uh -huh. done in designing, uh -huh. what's the one thing that you kind of are always anxious to get to or or when, when, when you're working? I play it. You know, it's a struggle to stop making monsters, but mm. um, my monster holic tendencies continue. But but the one thing that lets me put down the monster manuals is picking up the world building tools, right? It's the, I'm sort of obsessing on a, a thing called the Scarlet Citadel right now, where I'm trying to take a whole bunch of notes and whip them into something that could maybe be published someday. Um, and trying to figure out all the connections and does this passage really need to be there? And, you know, are these monsters too tough? Um, yeah, that world building part is how does it all connect? Who are the interesting people? What are the fulcrums? How do I explain it to the players without reading from a giant menu 12 feet long? That part gets me excited. So I guess it's adventure design and world building for me every time. Yeah. I'm not surprised. Uh, I think that's what it is at some level for every GM, you know, yeah. whether they're building the world through their words by describing what they're reading or, or coming up with their own stuff on the fly, either end of that spectrum. I think it all comes down to a love of, of creating an imagination space. Yes. Um, that's shareable. I, by the way, for anybody out there, I've been looking for that dungeon game for ages. So if you have any runs on, if you see any eBay links, you I mean, did a reprint, Wizards of the Coast mm -hmm. reprinted with a brand new set of art. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I've got the, I've got the new one. 
Yeah, yeah oh, you the, don't have the original. Yeah, like The new-ish one, yeah. Yeah, it's got to be at least five years what old. What we need to do is break into Alex Cameron's bar. And, <laughs> yeah. <here's laughs> and we'll get you six of them in shrink. Uh, so... <laughs> So then uh, kind of the, the third piece of, 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 that, of those questions is, like, what is, the, what is the proudest moment of your involvement in gaming? It can be anything. It can be from professional life or personal life, running, playing, oh, whatever. Man. Ooh. Or maybe your best interaction small, with gaming. Like small questions here. I don't know if you can Yeah, wow. Um, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> I, it's a moment that's happened multiple times over my career. It's the moment where I find somebody else. I mean, I would have said 20 years ago, it was the moment I first got published, right? Like TSR wrote me a check and I, I paid rent, right? It was like someone paid me nice. for my work. That's <laughs> my made up stuff. It was pretty good. Yeah. Yep. But uh -huh. in the last 10 years, it's way more about, hey, I found this guy and I published this thing in Cobalt Press and it's it's that thing everybody talks about, right? It's the indomitable fortress of Dib with the overturned wagon and everyone goes, oh yeah, that one. I'm like, yeah, I found that guy and I published that guy's stuff and he's gone on to do other things, right? Um, so at some point, I'm not sure when, I, I turned from being the, the new kid who was just proud to be in it to being the old hand who's like, I'm really proud to be helping other people get that first rung uh, on the ladder and you know they'll be around when i'm gone they'll still be doing great stuff and maybe they'll remember me as the guy who uh who said hey you you know yeah, who broke I them you, who gave them that first break yeah yeah you, you you did a good thing you you really got it um i think and, the, inevit and, the inevitable thing i see in a lot of gms is that ability to go from having the sh light shined on them to shining lights uh -huh. mm -hmm. on other people yes you know yeah at your table, right? Everybody wants to be the storyteller and the center of attention first, and they think, I'm a game master. Everybody pay attention to me. And then at some point, the really great ones all turn around and say, yeah, let me point that spotlight at you. Yeah, You're right. Well, that is, you know, I, we've talked, when we go through these questions, it, it often comes up to, like, our various styles of play are very different styles of running and playing, I suppose, but that there's so much commonality that is shared uh, in this hobby. Uh, friendly people, number one. Um, uh, in case you can't tell, Wolfgang seems like a perfectly lovely guy. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and then on top of it, just that willingness to share with each other and laugh and talk about experiences, I think, is something that really runs through the whole industry as far as I see. So, 